Hello, my beautiful kittens. In this video, we're going to be doing a guide for Shuei. I'm just going to be explaining the characters very quick, telling you guys how you should build her and use her and stuff like that. So yeah, let's begin. All right, so first of all, I'm going to explain her kit very quickly. Uh, her normal attack is just going to be a normal quantum normal attack. That's it. Her elemental skill is also going to be just normal quantum damage. It's going to deal damage to one enemy and then half the damage to enemies like besides it. That's it. It's going to hit three enemies. And then finally, her elemental burst is also just like quantum damage, but it's going to be break in the enemy's toughness even though it doesn't have like um quantum weakness so you're gonna be able to break any enemy's weakness even though they don't have like the quantum weakness on them also the more weakness you break the more damage increase you get and now for talent though um you're gonna be gaining stacks when you reduce the enemy's toughness or even when your teammates reduce the enemy's toughness and when you reach up to eight stacks she's gonna unleash one attack and it's gonna be dealing damage um three times to three random enemies and that's actually a big chunk of her damage so you don't really want to be ignoring this talent also you're not going to gain any stacks from this attack itself. You're only going to gain stacks from her elemental burst, skill, and auto attacks, or your allies' attacks. Her ascension traces are actually kind of important too. It's going to increase your damage by 100% of your break effects. So pretty much any break effects you're going to have, it's also a damage bonus up to a maximum of 240%. So you can just build break effects and you're going to be gaining free damage bonus pretty much. That's it. So you don't really need to build any damage bonus on Shuei. You just got to build break effects and it's just going to translate into damage bonus automatically. It's just like dual scaling, which is super, super good. Um, A4 is just going to increase your ult's damage if the enemy's toughness is less than 50%, which is good. And then finally, A6 is pretty much just going to be able to stock like extra stacks so we already know you only need eight to like unleash an attack so for example you have like let's say seven and then you gain like an extra four from your elemental burst in that case it's going to be 11 stacks without a6 you're just going to use eight and then go back to zero with a6 you're just going to be using eight to unleash your attack and then the extra three stacks are just going to be stored so the next attack you're going to start off with um three stacks which is just going to make the stacks very efficient which is pretty good now for talent priorities she's generally going to be a main dps or at least a sub dps so you'd want to upgrade everything except for normal attacks you just want to keep her talent elemental skill and ultimate like pretty close if i have to give you a ranking i'd say elemental skill then talent and then ultimate but you definitely want to keep them close ultimate might not be as important but for your talent and skill you definitely want them both upgraded all right so now moving on to her eidolons we're just going to read them very quick see if they're worth it or not so e1 is just going to increase the damage dealt by the talents follow-up attacks by 40 percent as i said before this is a pretty Pretty, you know considerable chunk of your damage so it's definitely gonna be a good talent nothing really special especially at e1 because the damage from your talent is not gonna be like a huge part but it's definitely considerable so i'd say it's cool especially for e1 now her e2 is gonna pretty much make her talents damage pretty much like her elemental burst damage it's just gonna reduce the enemy's weakness regardless if it has like a quantum weakness or it doesn't and also it's gonna heal shuei herself which is just whatever it's like five percent hp for one hit but it's cool so yeah her e2 is gonna help you out to like break the enemy's weaknesses faster even though they're not quantum and that's gonna be pretty cool um it's nothing really special to be honest it's just gonna be like breaking the enemy's weaknesses it's not gonna be exactly like her elemental burst though because her elemental burst is gonna build stacks and then you're gonna gain more follow-up attacks when using it even against like non-quantum weak enemies but from her talent you're not gonna be building stacks even if you like uh break the enemy's weaknesses or reduce their toughness so it's just gonna help you out to like break the enemy's weaknesses and that's it um it's still kind of cool though especially for e2 i'd say it's pretty good um, E3 is just going to increase the level of your elemental skill by 2, and then your auto attacks level by 1. It's kind of meh, it's nothing really special. Now, E4 is going to increase your break effects by 40% for 2 turns after you use your elemental burst. That's very, very good because break effect is going to be super good on her. So, any extra break effect is going to be pretty good. So, I'd say E4 is definitely worth it. Um, E5 is going to increase the level of your ultimate and your talent by 2. That's also very good. They're both like big sources of damage. And then finally, E6 is going to decrease the stat needed to launch your follow-up attack or talents attack to six um usually it's eight so now you're only going to need six stacks to launch this attack which means you're going to be able to launch more attacks which is pretty good just more damage more weakness break more everything all right so now that we explained her kit i'm going to explain her roles very quick so yeah um obviously she's a destruction character so you'd want to be using her as like a sub dps or a main dps if you want to um i would say she's more optimally be used as like a sub dps but if you want to use her as a main dps she's definitely viable to 
to. Now, how you'd want to be using True AE is going to be like this. You'd want to be using your elemental skill, and you just want to keep doing that until you get your elemental burst. When you get it, you just use your elemental burst. It's it's very simple. The thing is, is that there's also one thing between these two, which is your talents attacks. To launch your talents attack, you're going to need to get the stacks. And to get the stacks, you're going to have to break the enemy's toughness. The more toughness you break, the more stacks you get. This highlights a very big problem with True AE, in my opinion. You might be asking, what's the problem? I'm going to tell you right now. The problem is only her elemental burst is going to be able to break the enemy's toughness unconditionally. Her elemental skill is not going to be able to do that. So you might ask again, what's the problem with that? The problem with that is that it's going to result in much, much worse damage overall because it's just a whole cycle. If you're not going to be able to break the enemy's toughness with your elemental skill, that means you're going to gain less stacks for her talents. That means your talent is going to proc less or way less because the only source is going to be your elemental burst or your allies to get the stacks, which is less like much less efficient and then when your talent procs less first of all you're going to be doing less damage because as i said before it's a considerable amount of your damage and then second of all most importantly you're going to recharge less energy which means you're going to have less uptime in your elemental burst which also means less weakness break if the enemies are not quantum which again also means less um, talent procs and it's a whole cycle that's going to result in her damage just being way less especially because you're not going to be able to use an energy recharge rope because you definitely just want to use weakness break she's going to be lacking in terms of energy against non-quantum enemies so honestly i think using her against like non-quantum enemies is just not worth it in my opinion and that's my whole biggest problem with her and that's why i did a tier list before i didn't put her in like a tier i saw a couple people complaining saying that like her damage is like legendary and stuff like that which it can be but generally as a character she's gonna be kind of niche if you're not facing quantum enemies she's gonna be lacking a little bit all right, so now that we explained how she works, where she works best, let's move on and see if you want to use her, what's going to be her optimal build. All right, so starting off with the light cones, um, generally the fall of an Aeon is going to be her best in slot at R5, obviously. Um, it's a free to play weapon, so I would assume you're going to R5 it. And it's generally going to be her best in slot. I don't really see any reason why you'd want to use anything other than that. So I'd say just use the fall of an Aeon at R5 or S5. I'm sorry, my brain is just Genshin. It's just going to be giving you attack and it's also going to be very easy to proc the um you know weakness break thing and then it's just gonna give you damage increase which is pretty good um you can use other options like i shall be my own sword um the unreachable side and brighter than the sun mainly for the crit stats we're gonna talk about her stats in a little bit and she's gonna need quite a bit of crit especially because you just there's no way you're gonna be getting crit other than like her main stats and stuff like that so any crit stats are gonna be pretty good if you really like really really need it you can go with one of them and it's gonna perform pretty well again depending on like like um your build and how much crit you got from the substats how lucky you got and stuff like that it might be worse than the fall of aeon but if you really really need crit you can go with either one of them for the crit rate or crit damage um also same thing with the under the blue sky but the thing is a four star little base attack and stuff like that really don't think it's going to be worth it even though it's going to give you crit also the exact same thing with the new um four star light cone that's coming up the undealable promise it's going to give you break effect which is also super good for her and it's also going to give you crit rate when you use um your ultimate which is pretty good but again unless you really really need crit i'm not sure if it's gonna be worth it so yeah generally i would say just use on the fall of an aeon for most cases unless you really really need crit then in that case you might go with one of those all right so now moving on to her relic sets whoa before we continue though make sure you subscribe to the channel please so yeah click that subscribe button please thank you good kid <laughs> All right, let's continue with the video. All right, so for her best sets, um, I would say usually her best slot is going to be the normal quantum set, the genius of brilliant stars. It's going to give you quantum damage and also the defense ignore is going to be super good. Um, Again, you're also usually want to be using her against like quantum weak enemies. So it's going to be even better, which is super good. You can also use the Thief of Shoot in uh, Meteor. It's going to increase your break effects, which is pretty good. And then it's also going to help you out with energy and increase your break effects even more. Um, As I said before, break effect is going to be very important on so it's definitely going to be a good set. I would say either one of the two is definitely going to be very good. I'd say just use whatever of them you already have or you have like the better substats of and that's it. You can also mix two pieces of them which is pretty good. Now moving on to your planner sets. Um, Her best planner set is actually going to be the Talia. Obviously just for the break effects. But the thing is you're going to need 145 speed to get that. So it's either you build speed which is probably not what you want to do or you're going to be needing to use like speed buffers on your team. Honestly I think it's worth it but if you don't really want to use that and you don't want to like build
build that much speed you can go something like the space seal and station for example and just get that attack and it's gonna be cool but yeah generally the optimal planner set is just gonna be the talia all right so now moving on to the main stats on her on the body you just want to use crit either crit rate or crit damage whatever you need um it just depends on your sub stats and what weapons you're using whatever you know you just want to get as much as you can and maintain like something close to one to two ratio and that's it now on your boots um you can go either speed or attack again it just depends on what you need i'm going to tell you how much speed you're going to need in a little bit if you can reach that with your sub stats or with your buffers for example or whatever then in that case you can go attack just for the extra attack on your boots if not then just go speed and that's it on your sphere usually you just want to go um attack it's just better than most things and then finally on your rope you're gonna have to go break effects it's just necessary you definitely don't really want to be using anything else other than the break effect for the sub stats you're also going to need your speed break effects um crit attack that's it again depends on what you needed what you use and stuff like that i mean, I mean you can't really control it anyway so just work with whatever you can i'm gonna be honest she's kind of hard to build she needs a lot of like different things but hey it's not gonna really gonna matter as much just especially with like the crit attack and stuff like that you just get whatever you can and you're good now for the final stats that you definitely want to have on her first of all you'd want to have something close to 240 break effect since first of all it's gonna be pretty good just for the damage and breaking enemies and the entanglement damage and stuff like that and second of all it's gonna be good damage bonus it's gonna be converted from her a2 passive so you definitely just want to get that 240 cap or at least something close to it and then finally for your speed it's either you get like your usual 134 speed just your classics make sure you can attack two times in a turn and stuff like that or if you want to be using the talia set in that case you're gonna need 145 speed so it's up to you if you're using the talia you definitely want to make sure you go above 145 otherwise it's not gonna be worth it to use the talia in the first place if you're not then 134 is gonna be enough all right so now finally for team comps um she can be really used in many team comps she doesn't really require much from her team except for like general buffing and stuff like that or if you need like speed buffs and stuff like that then in that case you might need speed buffers other than that any supports that can you know give you damage bonus attack bonuses stuff like that are going to be appreciated and you can just build a team around her where you have like buffers like that so you're gonna have like a shui then a speed buffer or attack buffer whatever whatever you need you can have two of those like ron may as a break buffer we have it right now and then you're just gonna need the sustain and that's it i think any sustain can really work so yeah she doesn't really require much from her team you can also use her like topaz it's gonna work pretty well with like follow-up attack teams um you can use her in like a double dps team where she's like kind of more of a sub dps or whatever again as i said the same thing she's gonna be like kind of self-sufficient unless you really rely on something like the speed buffs to reach like her speed requirements or whatever in that case make sure you get that and then that's it she's just gonna be dealing damage as long as it's in the right conditions as i said before quantum enemies she's gonna work pretty well in any team just a team example to throw in in there we can have like true as a main dps let's say something like Ossed then ron may and then like lucha you know just supports to buff her like speed buffs from Ossed and stuff like that weakness break from ron may and all the support things and then you have lucha for sustain and you're Good. many of these characters can be swapped or whatever but yeah as i said you just need to sustain supports and you're good but yeah for now that was the video guys hope you enjoyed it if i forgot anything or you know said something wrong that's my first honkai guide so make sure to say that in the comments again make sure to leave like subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video peace